my whole whole uh, childhood was football and I guess my dad played and early memories are really hanging around dad's footy club and yeah I used to uh, go on the motorbike with him he had a motorbike so I'd jump on the back when I was younger and go to training and while they trained there was a second oval in the dark and just kick around for hours until until they finished so I guess that's how I got into footy and my dad's love of the game and he passed the baton over. It all happened reasonably quick I was I was probably 14 or 15 playing at Central Districts Football Club in, in South Australia and then sort of sped up from there. I went from the 17s to the, to the league in about a year and a half. Next minute I was picked by Port Adelaide. It was a bit of a whirlwind and yeah, I think back now and wasn't really prepared for the how quickly that would happen. My start was a little bit different given um, Port Adelaide were coming into the AFL and I was a South Australian lad so they could pick anyone in that particular year from South Australia pre-draft. But I was 17 years old, so I wasn't eligible for the draft, but they had one national selection of a 17-year-old. And I found out reasonably early on because the uh, national recruiting manager, I was, I was actually mates with his son, but that's not why I got picked. But he, uh, he probably alerted it um, you know, a couple of months out. So it became really real at that point. I, I thought maybe, um, but when, when he said, no, no, they're gonna pick you and it's, it's gonna happen. so. I feel like I, I had two months preparation, whereas really these, these lads now, they're thinking about it two or three years out. It probably came too quick in that I probably was a natural progression as opposed to really working for it. And I think um, that probably reflected in, in my first couple of years that I, I didn't have the impact that I, that I would have liked. And, and in a way that, that potentially bled through my career that relied on talent too much and and didn't quite realise my potential as a player, to be honest. But then when you've got to work for something, the, the feeling's a whole lot better. The week before, um, I thought I was a chance to get picked. Everyone G's you up to go and see the coach and ask if you're playing. So I went in and I said, am I playing? And he said, oh, look, you're really close. He said, but this week you've missed out. He said, look, I voted for you at match committee, but everyone else said no. So being young, I thought, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, fair enough, he got outnumbered. But then I'm thinking, you're the senior coach, you can make that call. So um, I don't think I'm the first victim of that, but um, no, he threw the rest of the match committee under the bus and said that, oh, you're in my team, but these other five blokes, they went against me. So, you, so you're unlucky, lad. Filled me with confidence for the next week. When you were named on the bench, you start on the bench and it didn't really come on until something was going wrong. I think I sat there for two and a half quarters it was pouring rain, your parents come over, Subiaco it was, and somewhere along the lines, uh, their tickets got lost, so they, they managed to get themselves into the ground, but I think they're up on the hill with, um, with ponchos, and they had a week off work after that, because I got really cruel from standing out, standing out in the rain to watch, watch me get, uh, I think I got one kick, two handballs. I remember the first guy that rang past me was Guy McKenna, and then Glenn Jakovic and John Worsfold, and I, I just thought, these guys were, you know, they were 200 gamers and it didn't, just didn't feel real and probably why I didn't get near the ball because I was just running around as if I had the best spectator seat in the house. You know, at that stage, I think, it, yeah, it was just the nerves got the better of me. You know, I can empathise with players these days that if we play young players, sometimes, you know, the first game, the expectations from my point of view are really about understanding what's, what's it like flying to a game, hotels, you're running out against guys you've watched. So I feel like I've, I've got that memory and I can relate to players who are going through that. And if they happen to have a poor game, I can, I can clearly tell my story. For me, I, I love the whole week. You'd want it to go a little bit longer. And I used to room with Roger James, who played for Port. And we got to about 10 o'clock and we, we just couldn't sleep before the game. So I thought we'll go down the foyer and just get a coffee or something. So we just sort of found a quiet corner and went and got a couple of coffees and, and sat down there for, I don't know, an hour and a half. Sort of people saw us, but no one really said anything. They just sort of wished you luck. That was just how it was back then. For us, it was about, this was gonna, we treat it like our only chance, which is what everyone should, because they don't, they either don't come around, or if they do, that might be it. And, and as a group, we felt we were really ready. Um, we'd felt disappointment and, and shame, embarrassment of previous years, so, I think we just were in that zone. We had a good mix of youth, experience. I think our language to ourselves was this, this is it. If we, if we don't win this one, 
Literally, I think, you know, the psyche and the balance and harmony of that group would have, would have just been gone. It felt like our last chance. Hasn't kicked a goal this afternoon. Stuart Jew winds up. Bullseye! And the flag is theirs! It was a bizarre feeling. It was a mixture of relief, elation, and you want it to last forever. You know, the lap of honour. Used to watch the teams like run around. I thought, why would you run? Just, just walk and, and take your time. And it was a moment where I thought, finally for the, that club and the people that have followed us through the hard times, was able to enjoy it. And I think that you know, we, we played a small part in that, but so much goes into it than just the, the 22 that are playing. Back then, you, don't, you didn't really talk about what you're going through, how much you, th you think about things. The factor of staying home, we'd had success. Was I too comfortable? Um, but in the end, when you win, you think you can win the next year, so you, so you stay. Um, but then 2006, I, I probably got to the point where I was, I was really stale, not only at that club, but with footy. And somewhere deep down, I thought it would just feel wrong to go to another club. I always wanted to go back to Central Districts in the SNFL. So I guess my plan really was to have a year off and go back and, and give some good service to, to Central Districts while I was still young. That didn't eventuate because obviously towards the back end of 2006, Hawthorne came knocking. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd spent the year working actually with, with Port Adelaide in the sponsorship and, and hospitality. But then, yeah, Clarko, gave me a call and said, what do you think? Um, he, he had the feeling that he had this group of group of players, I guess, in, in 2007 that were really young and talented. And I always think that he thought, get someone in who's won it and see what effect that might have. Yeah, he rang me the night before. I didn't want to put my nomination in unless they were going to pick me. Yeah, I was well off in conditioning and appearance. So in a way, I was like, I don't really need to be embarrassed here. But he said, you get the nomination in and I'll, and I'll do the rest. So the time was 12 o'clock and I think I walked it into AFL at like 11.59, away we went. Oh, it was the best thing I ever did, you know, outside of footy and, and for footy as well. Like if that went bad and then the team didn't progress from where they were the year before, I'm sure he would have come under a fair bit of heat. So pretty ballsy from, from Alastair, I felt that pressure early days but then I think you know again probably fast forwarding to the the night before the grand final I just thought I've got two hours to to make up for I guess for unfulfilled football career um, I thought people have put put their name on the line for me so I was probably the most focused I've ever been before a game and get something special done today and, and maybe that makes up for your flaws in previous years. I know when I, when I did retire at Port Adelaide, Mark um, Williams asked me whether I wanted to, to do development coaching. And I think probably based on the fact that he, he thought I had a, a reasonable footy IQ, I could always mix really well with, I guess, the youngest and, and the older players in the team. And I, and I knocked it back because I, I, I just felt the separation from playing to coaching at the same club was important. But that really pricked my ears up and thought, well, this is potentially a career again at it came pretty quick. And then going to Hawthorne with a specific role to try and, I guess, impart knowledge, build belief, and feeling like you have a small impact on, on people. And that was what got me thinking about it. And, and in the end, um, towards the end of Hawthorne, I, I got in contact with Peter Jonas, who was my coach at Central Districts. And he put me in touch with Ruzi and it was a good transition. Obviously, when you, when you come into a club as a new coach, things are gonna change because Otherwise the old coach would be there and old other people would be there. So we knew there had to be some changes, but we didn't want to jump into it again. We wanted to be reasonably measured and find out what do we need. But I guess the success so far for, for me and the club feels like, we feel like a footy club now. And I know that probably sounds funny, but when I first walked in, I quickly realized that no one loved the game anymore. Like it just seemed like there was a weight of expectation on their shoulders that they felt like they couldn't meet. So it feels like now, this year, a collective group of people 
that love each other's company, working hard together, and when you drive to the game, you genuinely believe you're a chance to win it. When you're a player, you're quite selfish in a way because you feel, okay, I've got to do what I need to do to get ready for the team. As a coach, you're constantly thinking about other people, all the players, you never feel like you're doing enough for anyone, so yeah, it's difficult. And we know it's an adventure and it's a challenging one, but however long it goes, I think we're gonna come out of this a better coach, better person, we're gonna have an amazing experience all together, yeah. If I'm honest, I was very reluctant. I know when it first got floated, yeah, the club was very keen to, I guess, to help show our journey. I guess they said they needed one person to try and tell the story through and I was reluctant for that to be me. Um, you know, coming into your third year, we just finished bottom. It could go any way, you never know. There's nothing um, given in, in this business. I felt quite exposed at different times. You know, you're, you're on camera eight, nine hours a day sometimes and they may show you 30 seconds. Now that could be your best, it could be your worst, we'll see.